mitochondrial DNA. Lynn Margulis, an evolutionary biologist, was the first one to see some similarities between mitochondria and prokaryotes and thereby came the proposal that a proposal of what we know as the endosymbiont theory that suggests that the mitochondria may have evolved from a bacteria. And this also explains why mitochondria has a DNA of its own. Now for a eukaryotic cell, this DNA is an extra chromosomal DNA, but this extra chromosomal DNA contributes to several basic functions of the cell. Therefore, let us look at the learning outcomes of this session. The mitochondria contains a closed circular covalent DNA that contains genes that help in several functions of the cell. In fact, the closed circular covalent DNA is very similar to the closed circular covalent DNA that is observed in prokaryotic systems. Just like the prokaryotic system does not have a nuclear membrane around it, the mitochondrial DNA is also not present within a nuclear membrane, but it is present as a nucleoid in the mitochondrial matrix. The mitochondrial genome consists of multiple copies. That means within one mitochondria, there can be several copies of the DNA present. And, the, and it has genes that code for not just proteins, they code for rRNA as well as tRNA. The inheritance of the mitochondrial genome, the replication and the transcriptional control are observed to be slightly different from that of the nuclear genome, but there can be a lot of similarities as well. What is interesting to note is that studies have shown that mutations in the mitochondrial DNA are associated with several diseases. Now, let us look at the mitochondrial genetics in brief. So, as mentioned, the mitochondrial DNA is a closed circular covalent DNA. It is about 16 kb in size. That, that means 16,000 base pairs. And interestingly, what has been observed is that the out, one of the strands of the mitochondrial DNA contains a higher percentage of GC and hence it becomes what is called as the heavy strand. Therefore, its complementary strand, which would have more of AT, will therefore be a light strand. This is something interesting that has been observed with the mitochondrial DNA. Now, this uh, 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 entire mitochondrial DNA, like mentioned, has about 37 different genes and it has 22 genes just for tRNA. So, as you can see over here, this is a tRNA for proline. You have a tRNA for threonine, glutamic acid, leucine, serine, histidine, and likewise, there are several different tRNA coding for or not coding but they are tRNA that can uh, bind to specific amino acids. So they are these amino acyl tRNAs that are present. So there are 22 of them being present in the entire mitochondrial genome. Now apart from these 22 tRNA are present obviously the genes which are responsible for the oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria. So here what you see is the cytochrome B uh, complex gene. Okay, this gives rise to cytochrome B. Here these are the genes that give rise to complex 1 of the electron transport system. So that of the NA, NADH dehydrogenase complex. So this is ND6, ND5, ND4, ND4L. You have ND3 over here. There is there are cytochrome C, uh, ox, ox, uh, um, cytochrome C oxidase complex uh, component over here. Here what you see is the genes for ATPase 8 and 6. You have the cytochrome oxidase uh, complex again. This is complex uh, again. This is the uh, NADH uh, complex. So these are the genes which all are responsible for enzymes that enzymes and proteins that form the electron transport system complexes. 
and these electron transport system complex as you all know is important for transfer of electrons from one system to the other to to form what is called as a proton gradient and the energy stored in that proton gradient is then used by atp synthase to to convert it into atp that is how mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell so the electron transport complexes are very important and you can see that several 13 genes of uh, 13 genes are present which give which give rise to proteins that are part of the electron transport complex of the mitochondria one also has two rrnas the 16s and the 12s rrna and as noted the rrnas or ribosomal rnas are part of uh the ribosomes and so the mitochondria has a ribosome has ribosomes of its own which are again 70s type and we all know that 70s type ribosomes are found again in prokaryotic systems so therefore uh these genes once transcribed can be translated by the ribosomes that are present in its matrix so you can see how the genome of the mitochondria is having genes that are transcribed and translated so as to help in the oxidative phosphorylation that is taken care of by mitochondria as an organelle and that is very essential for the eukaryotic cell because all atp or major atp comes from the mitochondria itself now interestingly what has been observed is that this portion of the mitochondrial genome is that is called as the d loop has uh, genes that give rise to or they are non coding genes basically and they are uh, uh, they are constituents or this contain sequences that are important for replication for transcription etc uh, what has been found is that within this d loop itself or from this d loop itself there is the origin of replication for the heavy strand so in mitochondria or mitochondrial dna what has been studied is that the mitochondrial dna replication is through d loop mechanism so in this mechanism what happens is one strand begins to get replicated first and then the other strand gets replicated so at this point where you have the origin of replication for the heavy strand the light strand is uh, is considered as Uh, the template and on it the uh, you know new daughter cell not daughter dna will be formed and that that daughter dna is going to be the heavy strand so here is initiation of replication of the heavy strand while almost after two thirds one finds that there is an origin for the light chain as well and from here the heavy chain uh, this strand you have the origin over here and using this as the template you have the dna polymerase carrying out synthesis of the light strand so you have displacement of one strand and by displacement of one strand the other strand is used as a template so what effectively we understand is that this strand becomes the template for the synthesis of the heavy strand while this strand becomes a template for the synthesis of the light strand but the origins for both is going to be different so they are not going to begin at the same at the same time so that is what is the significance of d loop mechanism of replication also indicating that you have a unidirectional uh, replication happening so this is something that is importantly associated with the mitochondrial dna another interesting facet that is associated with the mitochondrial dna is that you have a uh, promoters being present and these promoters require the uh, activity or require the transcription factor to come and bind to it to initiate transcription and transcription happens in such a way that the that it is polycystronic that means that several genes are being transcribed at the same time and these mrna which contain several genes are being translated to give rise to individual proteins so therefore this is something that is again observed in the prokaryotes and you observe the same in the mitochondria 
But what is important for us to understand is that the mitochondrial replisome machinery, almost all components of the mitochondrial replisome machinery, that is all molecules that are needed for replication, whether it is DNA polymerase gamma or whether it is um, the uh, DNA helicase, that is the twinkle, it is named as twinkle, all of these are actually synthesized by genes in the nuclear DNA, that is in the nucleus. So they are formed in the cytoplasm and all these uh, proteins come into the mitochondria through transport uh, uh, channels and once they are inside the matrix, they carry out the replication of the mitochondrial DNA. The same is the case with the transcription as well. So the RNA polymerase for the transcription of the genes of the mitochondrial DNA come from the nuclear DNA. So that is interesting. It is interesting that, you know, the mitochondrial DNA does rely or does depend on proteins of the nuclear DNA for its transcription, replication, including repair. So you may have while replication is going on, certain mistakes happening or because of, uh, you know, exposure to several uh, oxidative stress or oxidative um, you know, oxygen-free radicals, there may be mutations in the mitochondria which need to be repaired. And so DNA repair systems can also come and repair the DNA of the mitochondria. So these are certain things that are, uh, you know, um, associated with mitochondrial genetics. Now, mitochondrial genome is a polyploid. When we say polyploid, what does it mean? It means you have multiple copies of the same. So uh, mitochondrial genome being polyploid is basically essentially trying to say that from that you could have what is called as homoplasmy. That means all the copies can be identical or they could be heteroplasmy. That is, you can have more than one genotype of the mitochondrial DNA present. Now, this is definitely a concept which is being studied in greater details and Effectively, what has been observed is there is a greater homoplasmy uh, relatively to the heteroplasmy, although it is not very clear. More studies were, are still being carried out, especially because a lot of diseases are associated with my, mitochondrial DNA and thereby, thereby whether the mitochondrial genome is present or is, uh, is exhibiting heteroplasmy or homoplasmy does decide the uh, this does decide whether the uh, disease is going to be, you know, uh, you you could see the symptoms of the disease or the disease or it could just be a carrier. Okay, that is something that is there. So, uh, in itself, one can understand that mitochondrial DNA inheritance is something that is studied in genetics and uh, it is being studied very uh, in, uh, in a large population because a uh, mitochondrial genome is small and therefore to sequence the genome is easy and therefore to see the different uh, changes that happen in the mitochondria is also very easy. Now, when one considers mitochondrial inheritance, it, what has been observed is that it is majorly maternal. So in fact, initially uh, mitochondrial inheritance was considered to be maternal inheritance which means that the mitochondria that is present in an infant was, uh, was considered to be coming only from the mother and not from the father. However, a lot of studies now have indicated that it is not necessarily always only maternal. You can also have uh, the mitochondria coming from the father. And so there can be a paternal, this thing is, this has been clearly understood because there are several mitochondrial diseases uh, or there are several people who have diseases not because the, of the mitochondria that they have got from the mother but because of the mitochondria that they have received from the father or the father's side or the father's lineage. Okay, So this is something that is again very interesting with respect to mitochondria. Now you would find that uh, a lot of mitochondrial inheritance and uh, genetics has been studied by uh, you know, what is called as trans, trans mitochondrial cybrid formation. So what people do is they actually um, insert a mitochondria in a, uh, sorry, they insert a, a mitochondria in a, 
um, cell which does not have mitochondria to see the effect of the mitochondria that has been inserted. Now, common features of mitochondrial DNA associated diseases. So, we will only look at some because you must understand that uh, mitochondrial DNA is present in all nucleated cells. And so, all parts of the body or many parts of the body can be affected if there is a, a defect in the mitochondrial DNA. So, you can have uh, neurological problems like migraine, strokes, epilepsy, dementia, myopathy, etc. All associated with uh, mitochondrial DNA. You could have, uh, you know, dysphagia, irritable bowel syndrome, again associated with mitochondrial DNA, heart failure, cardiomyopathy, respiratory failure, recurrent respiration, pneumonia. These could all be associated with micro mitochondrial DNA. So, as mentioned, because there are many tissues that have mitochondria, you would find that several different tissues can get affected uh, because of damages in the mitochondrial DNA. Let us look at some of the diseases that are associated with the mitochondrial DNA. Now, what has been understood with by a lot of studies is that uh, mitochondrial DNA is associated with a very high mutation rate almost about 10 to 70 times higher mutation rate than the nuclear DNA. So, both point mutations and re DNA rearrangements have been observed with point mutations being much larger in a number. And uh, it has been found that almost all different organs of our body have certain diseases associated because of a mutation in the mitochondrial DNA. So, if you look at uh, skeletal muscles, you, you see myopathy or neuropathy, observe heart, we can see that you have what is called as cardiomyopathy, eyes, you can see you have ophthalmoplegia uh, or you have retinopathy, liver, hepatopathy, kidney, you have glomerulopathy, pancreas, diabetes mellitus, blood, you have Pearson's syndrome, uh, brain, you have uh, Parkinson's, you have uh, Alzheimer's, you have ataxia, you have seizures, uh, colon, you have pseudo obstruction constriction. These things are all or have been associated with the uh, mitochondrial DNA. Now, sometimes it is not. It is not solely because of the mitochondrial DNA. It can also be because of a combination of both the nuclear DNA and the mitochondrial DNA. But the fact is that you have diseases or patients do suffer from diseases that are associated directly with the mitochondrial DNA. Another interesting fact is that mitochondrial genomes are an informative tool for assessing, you know, specific aspects of uh, evolution. Because you have this high rate of mutation and uh, because mitochondrial DNA is small and you can sequence it, you can actually screen a large number of mitochondria from the population to look at how a particular disease has evolved or how a particular characteristic of a human associated with the mitochondrial DNA has been, uh, has been associated. So, in fact, there are many companies that use mitochondrial DNA to trace back the ancestry of many people, people who want to know uh, who their mother is or who their uh, grandparents were or from where they came. So, it is possible to actually look at the mother's lineage through mitochondrial DNA. And so, there are, so there are many studies that have looked at, uh, you know, uh, evolution and also looked at ancestry through using mitochondrial DNA. Let us make the conclusions. Mitochondrial DNA comprises about 37 genes coding for proteins related to oxidative phosphorylation, tRNA and rRNAs. The D-loop mechanism of replication has been associated with mitochondrial DNA. However, here I, we, uh, I would definitely like to point out that there are many, many studies that suggest that it could be the conventional form of replication as well where the leading and the lagging strand are synthesized simultaneously. Uh, just like in the bacterial system. Uh, transcription is observed to be polycystronic. The replication and transcription are aided by proteins that are coded by the nuclear DNA. The mitochondrial DNA is being inherited. Majorly, it is maternal, with several studies indicating that it is not purely maternal. 
The mitochondrial DNA is associated with a high rate of mutations due to oxidative damage and therefore are the root cause of several diseases. So mitochondrial DNA, the extra chromosomal DNA in eukaryotes has characteristics that vary from the nuclear DNA and are essential for the functioning of the cell. Thank you.